from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is a CUBE conversation from our Boston area studio. Welcome back to the program. Bobby Patrick, who's the Chief Marketing Officer of UiPath. Bobby, good to see you. Great to be here, Stu. All right, Bobby, we're going to tackle head on an interesting discussion that's been going on uh, in the industry. Uh, <coughs> of course, artificial intelligence is this wave uh, that, that is impacting a lot. When you look at earnings reports, everyone's talking about it. Most companies are understanding how they're doing it. Um, it is not a new term. You know, I, I, I go back reading my history of technology. Ada Lovelace, 150 years ago, when she was helping to define what a computer was, uh, you know, she made uh, it was the, the the Lovelace objective, I believe they said, uh, which uh, what was right. later quoted by by Turing and the like is that you know if we can describe it in code, um, it's probably not artificial intelligence because they're not building new things and right. you know being able to change on there. Uh, so there is hype around AI itself, um, but uh, UiPath is uh, you know one of the leaders in robotic process automation and you know how that fits in uh, with, with with AI and machine learning and uh, all of these other terms. Uh, it get, can get a bit of a bit of acronym soup, and we all can't agree on what the terms are. So l let's start with some of the basics, Bobby. Uh, pl please give us you know RPA and AI, and uh, you know we'll get into it from there. Well, robotic process automation is you know according to the analysts like Forrest, are part of the overall AI broader kind of massive, massive market. Um, you know, AI itself has many different, different uh, 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 routes for, you know, deep learning, right, and, and machine learning, natural language processing, right, um, you know, and so on. So I think AI as a, as a term covers many different grounds, right? In RPA, uh, AI is apply, applies two ways. It applies within RPA in that we have a technology called computer vision, it's how a robot looks at a screen like a human does, which is very, very difficult actually. You look at a, a Citrix terminal session or a VDI session, different than an Excel spreadsheet, different than a SaaS app, and, you, and most processes run across all of those, so a robot has to be able to look at all that, all of those uh, uh, screen elements and, and, uh, and understand them, right? So it was AI within computer vision around understanding documents, looking at unstructured data, looking at handwriting, you know, conversational understanding, looking at text in an email and determining context. Uh, looking, uh, looking, helping with chatbots. But a number of those components, it doesn't mean we have to, we built that all ourselves. What RPA does is we bring it all together. We make it easy to automate and build and, and, and create the data flow of a, of a process. You know, then you can apply AI to that, right? And so I think, uh, look, two years ago when I first joined UiPath, putting RPA and AI in, a sense, in the same sentence, people laughed. A year ago we said, you know what, RPA is really the path to AI in business operations. Now, you know, we say that we're the most highly valued AI company in the world, and no one has ever disagreed. Yeah, uh, so it, 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 it's good to lay out uh, some of the adopting, because one of the things, right, they look at and say, if I'd looked at this product two or three years ago, uh, it's not the product uh, that it is today. We know how fast software is making right. changes along the way. Uh, second thing, you know, automation itself is something that we've been talking about my entire career. Right. When I look at things that we were doing five, 10, 15 years ago and calling automation, we kind of laugh at it. Um, because today, automation absolutely is making a lot of changes. RPA, uh, you know, is, is taking that automation, you know, in, in a very, you know, strategic direction for, for many companies there. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's the, uh, the, the, the conversation we had uh, last year at your conference was, you know, RPA is the gateway drug, if you will, right. uh, of that environment because Automation is scared a lot of people. Am I just doing scripts? You know, hey, you know, what do I control? What do I set? So maybe just give us that that first grounding of kind of where that automation path you know has come and is going. Yeah. So there's different kinds of automation, right? Like you said uh, we've had automation for 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 decades, primarily in IT. Automation primarily was around you know API to API integration, and that's really hard, right? It requires developers, engineers, uh, it requires them to keep it current. Uh, it's expensive and takes long, you know, longer time. You know, along comes the technology, RPA and UiPath, right, where you can automate, you know, fairly quickly. There's built-in recorders, and and you can do it with a drag and drop of, uh, like a flowchart, and and you can automate a process. And that 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 automation is immediately uh, beneficial. I mean, that outcome is is immediate, and and the cost of do, doing that is 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 small in comparison. And I think. Uh, maybe it's the long tail of automation in some ways, right? It's all of these things that we do around a SAP process. Um, the, re the reality is if you have SAP, or you have Oracle, or you have Workday, the human processes that are around that involve still 
in a spreadsheet. They involve PDF documents. And you know, a great, my, one, one of my favorite examples right now that's on, on YouTube uh, with Microsoft is Chevron. So Chevron uh, actually has hundreds of thousands of PDFs that are generated from every oil rig every day. It has all kinds of data in different, in different formats, tables and, and um, uh, different structured and semi-structured data. And they would actually extract that data manually to be able to process it and analyze that, right? Working with Microsoft AI and UiPath RPA, right, they are able to uh, automate that entire massive process. And now they're on stage talking about it at Microsoft and, and UiPath events, right? And you know, they call that AI. That's applying AI to a massive, a massive problem for them. They needed the, the robot to be completely accurate though, right? You don't want to apply, you know, have worry that the data that's being extracted from the PDFs is inaccurate, right? So, you know, machine learning goes into that. There's exception management, it's processed part of the, a, a part of that as well, but you know, they call it AI. Yeah, some of this is just, uh, you know, the people in the industry, the industry watchers is, you know, we get very particular uh, on different terminology. Well, d let's not conflate <coughs> artificial intelligence or augmented intelligence with machine learning because they're uh, different environments. I've, I've heard Forrester talk about, right, it's a spectrum though, there's an umbrella for some of these, so, you know, <laughs> we like not to get too pedantic on, uh, you know, individual terms right. itself. Um, you know. But let me give you uh, some more examples, because I think, I think um, you know, the term robotic in, in RPA, yes, it's true that the vast majority of, you know, the last couple of years with RPA has been very rules-based, right? Because most processes today, like in a call center, there's a rule, do this, and this, and this, and this, and so you're automating that same rules-based structure. But once that data is flowing through, you can actually then look at the history of that data and then turn a rules-based automation into an experience-based automation. And how do you do that? You apply, you, you apply uh, machine learning algorithms. You apply Data Robot, Element AI, IBM Watson to it, right? So, but it's still the RPA platform that is that's driving that automation. It's just no longer rules-based, it's experience-based. Uh, a, a great example at uh, UiPath Together Dubai recently was Dubai Customs. They had a process where when you declared something, you say you a box of chocolate, they had to open up a, a, a binder and find a classification code for that box of chocolate. Well, they use our RPA product and, and, and they make a call, a call out to IBM Watson as part of the automation and they just write in, you know, pink box of uh, candy filled chocolate. And it takes its deep learning and comes back with a uh, classification code, all as part of an automated process. What happens? Dubai Customs lines go from being uh, two hours to being a, a few minutes, right? It's a combination of, of our RPA capability and our automation workflow capability and the ability to bring in IBM Watson. You know, Dubai Customs says, you know, they applied AI now and solved a big problem. Yeah, uh, one of the things I was reading through the recent Gartner Magic Quadrant on, on RPA, and they had two classifications. One was uh, kind of the automation does it all, and the other was the people and machines, things like chatbots. Uh, some of the examples you've been giving there seem to be that combination. Where, where, where do those two fit together? Or are those distinctions that you make? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, Gartner's interesting. Gartner's a very IT-centric analyst firm, right? And IT often, in my view, are very conventional thinkers, and they're often not the fastest to adopt breakthrough technology. They weren't the fastest to adopt cloud, they weren't the fastest to, 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 to adopt on-demand CRM, and they weren't the fastest to jump on to, to RPA because they believe, hey, why can't we use an API for everything? And the Gardner analysts kind of, in the beginning of the process of the Magic Quadrant, you know, spent a lot of time with us and they were trying hard to say that was what, you should solve everything with an API. That's just not reality, right? And uh, it's not feasible and it's not affordable, right? And so, um, but RPA, is, it's, it's not just the automation of a, of, a, of a task or a process, it's then applying a whole set of other technologies. We have 700 partners today in our ecosystem. Natural language processing partners, right? Uh, machine learning partners, right? Uh, chatbot partners you mentioned. So we want to be, we want to make it very easy and in a drag and drop way to, to be able to apply these great technologies to an automation to solve some big problem, right? Uh, what, what's fun to me right now is there's a lot of great startups they come out of, say, insurance, or they come out of financial services, and they've got a great algorithm, they know the business really well, and they probably have one or two amazing customers, and they're stuck. We, for them, this came from a partner of ours, you're becoming, you, UiPath, you're becoming our best route to market because you have the data, you have the workflow. And, and uh, so our job, I think, in some ways, is to make it easy to bring these technologies together, to apply them to an automation, to make do that in a democratized way where, where you know, a non-engineer can do this, um, and and I think that's what's happening. 
you know, those integrations between environments can, can be very powerful, uh, something we see because uh, you know, every shop has lots of applications, they have lots of technical debt, and you know, they're not just sweeping the floor of everything they yeah. have. Um, what are some of the limits of AI and RPA today? Where do you see things going? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I think I think uh, you know, deep learning. Uh, you know, we see very little of that. It's probably applied to some kind of science projects and things within companies. Um, I think um, you know, for the vast majority of our customers, you know, they use machine learning within RPA for computer vision, but by default. But you know, they're still not really at a stage of of kind of mass adoption of being able to think, which algorithms do I want to apply to a process? So I think um, you know, we're trying to make it easier for you to be able to like in drag and drop AI, we call it. Uh, to make it easier to apply, uh, but I think you know we're we're in we're in in uh, very early days, and as you mentioned, there's market confusion on it. I, I know one thing from our 90 plus uh, customers that are in our advisory boards. I know from them they say that their company struggles with finding an ROI in AI, right? And you know I think we're helping there because we're applying it to a real operation. They say the same thing about blockchain. I don't know, Stu. Do you know of a single example of a blockchain ROI? Great example. Yeah, it, it reminds me, big data was one of those that you know over half of the people failed to get the ROI they want. It's it's one of those those promises of certain technology. Right. The high level, it's you know, you know, let, let's poo poo Bobby things that actually have tangible results and yeah. get things done, uh, but you weren't following the strict guidelines of the API economy. <laughs> right. Well, true. Exactly. Right. But I, you know, you look at you, you know, it's what's great. What I find amazing is so I mentioned on another one of our talks conversations that twenty three thousand people come to UiPath events this year to our own events, not trade shows, other things, that's different. And they want to get on stage and talk. They're, they're delighted about this. And, you know, and they're, they're talking about, uh, you know, generally speaking, RPA is helping them go digital, but they're all saying their ambition is to apply AI, to, to make those processes smarter, to learn from, to go from rules-based to experience-based. And I think what's, what's beautiful about UiPath is that you know, we are a platform that you can, you, can, you can get there over time, right? And you can apply different, well you can't predict perhaps the algorithms you're going to want to use in two or three years. We're not going to force you. You can use, apply any algorithm you want to an automation work going through. And so I think that flexibility is actually, for, our, for, for customers, uh, it's, it's very, um, uh, they find it very comforting. Yeah, it's one of those things I say, uh, you know, most companies have a cloud strategy, uh, but that needs to be kind of written in, uh, you know, not etched in stone, but you need to revisit it every quarter. Same thing with what's happening in AI and in your space. Things are changing so fast that they need to be agile. Uh, they That's need right. to be able to, you know, make changes. So uh, in October, you're going to have a lot of those customers up on stage talking. Where, where will this AI discussion fit into UiPath Forward in Las Vegas? Yeah, so, um, you know, we talk a lot about our AI fabric framework. <clears throat> and so it's around document understanding, getting smarter, helping robots get smarter and smarter, what they see on a screen, what they see on a document, what they see with handwriting, and improving the accuracy, uh, visual understanding, looking at uh, uh, you know, face recognition and other types of, of the images and being able to understand the images. Uh, conversational understanding, the tone of, a, of, of an email. Is this person really upset, how upset? Um, or, or a conversational chatbot or, or else. You know, really evolving from mimicking humans with RPA to augmenting humans. And I think um, that story, uh, both in the innovations, uh, the customer examples on stage, I think you're going to see uh, the sophistication of automations that are, that are being used uh, through UiPath grow, grow uh, exponentially. Okay, so I want to give you the final word on this, and I don't want to talk to the people that might poo-poo or argue RPA and AI and ML and all these things. Bring us inside your customers. You know, what, where, 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 you know, how does that conversation start? Are, are they coming it from, you know, AI, ML, RPA, or their stance, or is, you know, is there a, a business discussion uh, that that usually catalyzes uh, the, this engagement? They're, our customers are starting with digital, right? They're trying to go digital. They know they need digital transformation. It's been very, very hard, right? And there's a real outcome that comes quickly from taking a mundane task that is expensive and automating that, right? So the outcomes are quick. Often projects that involve our partners like Accenture and others, the payback period on the entire project with RPA can be six months. It's self-funding. What other technologies do in B2B is self-funding in one year. So that's part of the incredible adoption growth. But every single customer doesn't stop there. They say, okay, I also want to know that this automation, this, this, I want to know that I can go apply AI to this. And it's in every conversation and, and so there's two big booms with, 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 with uh, UiPath and R RPA. The first is when you go digital, there's some great outcome, there's some productivity gain, it's immediate, right? I guess I said the payback, the payback, payback period is quick. The second big one is when you go turn it from a rules-based to an experience-based um, 
uh, process, or you apply, apply AI to it. There's another set of business benefits down the road, and it will keep getting, as more algorithms come out and things, you can keep applying to it. So this is sort of the gift that keeps on giving. And I think if we didn't have that, that connection to machine learning or AI, uh, I think the enthusiasm level though of you know, the majority of our customers would not be anywhere near what it is today. All right, well Bobby, really appreciate digging into the customer <laughs> reality, RPA, AI, all the acronym soup that is going on, and uh, we look forward to UiPath Forward uh, at the Bellagio in Las Vegas this October. It'll be fun. All right, I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you so much for watching theCUBE.